If you're tired of losing to the Queen's Gambit, then you're in the right place. I'm going to show you a really fun opening you can play against it that has some of the coolest traps you'll ever see. But I'm also going to show you, if they don't fall for the traps, how you can get into a good position anyway. Let's take a look. All right, guys, so d4, d5, c4. This is the Queen's Gambit. White is giving away the pawn to get compensation in other ways. Now, you have a lot of ways that you can respond. You can accept the Gambit. You can decline it with e6 or c6 or knight to f6. But the move that I'm going to recommend to you guys today is e5. Okay, this is called the Albin Counter Gambit. It's a counter gambit because we are offering our own pawn uh, for free, essentially. There's nothing defending this pawn. And if white wants, they can simply take it. Now, why would we give up a pawn for free this early in the game? Well, it has to do with getting our pieces out as quickly as we can and creating counter chances with active de piece development. That's really what it comes down to. So yes, we lose a pawn if white wants, but then our bishop can play a role in the game very early on, okay? So that's kind of the idea. Now, the main trap here, I'm gonna show you right away, because this is this is a fun one. So let's take a look. If they accept this, you're gonna play the move d4. Now, d4 is a very nice move because it takes away this square from the knight. Normally, this knight wants to go to c3, but it can't, we've taken that away. And also, we're controlling this e3 square if this pawn ever pushes, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. So most players with white, when they see this pawn, they're like, well, that's really annoying. I want to get my knight here, but I can't. So I'm going to get rid of this pawn. And they'll play e3 to try to attack it. This is exactly what we want. Okay, This is the best case scenario for us. And what we're going to do is play the move bishop to b4 check. Now remember, the knight can't block because of our pawn, which means white really only has two options, the knight or the bishop to d2. Now, most players will play bishop here. If they play knight there, it doesn't change too much. We're going to take here. We still have a pretty nice position. We'll come back to that in just a second. But let's focus on the main line. A block with the bishop. What are we going to do? We're going to capture this pawn on e3. Now, what you will notice is that this is pinned. Okay? This is pinned. And the bishop cannot take. The other thing about this is that the queen can't trade off here, which is kind of what white wanted to do, right? Like, if we go back to this position, white was hoping that we were going to take it right away. Then they would trade queens, capture here, and white's actually totally fine. White's doing great. They have an extra pawn and they're great. But what we did by throwing in this, sorry, by throwing in this bishop before check move, now when we take, notice there's no queen trade, right? This is important. So white has a couple of options and they're all kind of bad for them. But what a lot of people think is that, wait a second, your bishop is undefended. Um, I'm going to take a free piece, right? And now we have a killer move. If you would like to pause, you can probably figure this out if you looked at the thumbnail. Well, that's correct. If you said e takes f2 check, that's the winning move here. Because if the king takes, then white's queen is undefended. We simply take a free queen. So white has to play king to e2 to keep the king guarding the queen. And now we would like to go here and win the queen. But white has knight to f3, which kind of takes away the fun. So what we do is we capture here, but we don't get a queen. Because that would allow white to trade queens and get out of the jam, right? Okay, so we promote to a knight with check, which forces white to recapture, and that gives us time to play bishop g4, lining up here and winning the queen. Okay, so that's the that's the main idea. That's this trap is very common. It's happened. Let me see how many times it's happened. Yeah, I just checked the database, and almost seventy thousand players have played this and fallen into this trap. So it's pretty common. Okay, so we saw the main trap there, but let's actually go back for a second. And what if white is a little bit smarter, let's say, and they see what's going to happen here. And instead of, you know, taking your bishop, they take here, right? What do we do? Well, we have a nice move here, queen to h4, check. Now, white doesn't want to play the move king to e2. That's a terrible move to have to play. You can't castle. You've blocked your bishop. It's king is stuck in the center. So they're going to play g3. But now we can swing the queen over to e4. And notice we're attacking the rook. We're attacking this pawn. And we're attacking this pawn. It's a triple threat. And if you're thinking that this is defended by the bishop, well, it's not. That bishop is pinned. The bishop can't actually move there. So a lot of ways that you could approach this. Most people are probably going to play knight to f3 to block off and save their rook. And now you can either play knight to c6 and kind of keep developing. Or you can go for some trades here. Queen takes a, uh, e3. And you can kind of trade some of this stuff off. This is a totally fine position for black. You're going to play knight c6, develop your pieces, 
and this is a very weak pawn and a target for you uh, to go into the end game. So that's one option that you have. All right, let's go back. The other thing here, if white plays knight to d2, very similar, you're going to take, and when they take back, queen to h4. So remember this idea, it's pretty common. And again, swing the queen over to e4. Remember, this is pinned, right? So whatever piece is there, if it's a knight or a bishop, it's not actually doing anything if it's pinned to the king. Okay, and so you can make use of that and, and start attacking stuff. And this is a pretty pleasant position for black as well. Okay, so that's kind of the main, the main line, the main trap. Now, some people going back here, when we play d4, they don't play e3 immediately, they play knight to f3 first. We're going to play knight c6, developing and attacking here, and then they'll play e3. And our plan is kind of the same, right? Whenever we see this move, we boom, we bring the bishop to b4. That's what you want to remember, okay? And it's going to be the same kind of thing on bishop d2, we're going to take here. And if they capture here, what do we play? You guys have seen this idea before. That's right, we take here with check, and of course, the king can't take, or they lose their queen. Now, they could play king e2, and... Probably the best thing is to just trade, capture this, and get ready to develop our bishop and castle queenside. It's still a very pleasant position for us, uh, but unfortunately, we don't have the you know the, the follow up capture there. All right. The other thing that I want to cover here briefly is that sometimes people going all the way back to the beginning. Sometimes people, for whatever reason, don't want to take your pawn. Oh, it's a gambit. I'm afraid of gambits or whatever. I don't accept gambits. And they'll just play the move knight to c3. If they do this, there's a really nice line that you need to be aware of here. Okay, we're going to take on d4. And when they take back, we're going to attack the queen with a tempo. Now, a lot of players with white are going to be like, okay, my queen's under attack, but I can take this for free. I'm up a pawn. I'm getting ready to trade queens. I'm going to go into an endgame just up a pawn, right? But watch what happens. We play bishop to e6. This is an, a key... Uh, a crucial, yeah, a crucial move. That's what I'm trying to say. A crucial move because when white captures, we have to be able to take with our rook, okay? So if we played, let's just say, this move, this is not nearly as good because now we either have to take with our king, we can't castle, which is not great, or we have to retreat our knight, which is also not great, moving backwards, right? So by playing bishop to e6, now we can take with the rook, which is very, very important. This rook is going to be a monster. Now watch what happens next. A lot of people think, okay, it's time to develop. And they play a move like e3. We actually have a killer move here. Knight to b4. And we're threatening a fork that is not easy for white to deal with. It can't defend it with the bishop. We just take the bishop for free. You don't have any other pieces that can control this square. A lot of people will play rook to b1. Knight to c2 check forces the king up. Notice the rook here cutting off all these squares. We simply take here with check. Look at this, look at this, look at this. King has to come out and bam, we take a free piece. We are all over white here, okay? So just because the queens are traded and we're down a pawn, no, 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 no. White has some serious problems in their position, okay? This is, this is kind of the idea that white really can't stop. Now you might say, what if they play a3? We can't go there. Guess what? Knight to d4, and it's the same thing. We're coming in this way, same threat. If they try to avoid the fork, guess what? That's checkmate. That is checkmate. The game is over. If they try to avoid the fork by moving the king, guess what? Knight to b3 is a discover check, and we're still winning the rook. So lots of problems for white here, and uh, that's definitely one you want to be aware of. That's if they don't accept the gambit. Now, most people are going to accept it, but just wanted you to be aware if they play knight to c3. That's what can happen. Now, you've got the basics there of, of the line, why we play it, what's the kind of the main trap. Let's talk about some of those people who maybe have seen this before. Maybe they've been trapped before and they know what you're trying to do, okay? Those people, captures d4. Um, let's just say knight to f3, knight to c6. These people, a lot of the times, they know that the idea of this opening is the bishop b4 check, and it causes so many problems. And what they will do is just play a3. They just play a3 right away, and they think, okay, I've stopped all of black's tricks. So I want you guys to be prepared. If they play this move, what I recommend is knight g to e7. We don't really need to bring this bishop out right away anymore because they've taken away kind of our main square. So instead, we bring the knight. The knight on e7 actually has two ideas. You might go to g6 to put pressure on this pawn, or you might go to f5 to defend d4 
and attack e3. Okay, so you're going to have two ideas there. But there's one line in particular that I want to show you. This is really good if you're playing against a higher rated opponent and you are okay with the draw. I want you to remember this line. So e3, you're going to play bishop g4, keeping the pressure here on the knight and the queen so that, you know, this can't happen or you can take back. Um, bishop to e2, and now you can trade. And notice again the important part here. If the queen trades, we have the rook coming over, right? That's a kind of a key idea you want to remember. Don't allow this queen trade unless your rook can recapture. Okay, that's important. We've seen that before, but just want to reiterate that. Okay, bishop takes. And there's a funny line here. Like I said, if you're playing against a higher rated opponent and you're okay with the draw, remember this one. Okay, you take the knight. They're going to take back with the bishop. You take here. You're attacking these guys. They're probably going to take this pawn. You take here, attacking the bishop, attacking this pawn. They're probably going to take this pawn. Now, they don't have to, but just these are some logical moves that people generally will play. And now you have this really interesting idea, knight to a5. Now, it probably looks like a weird move, like we're just attacking the bishop. No, we're actually doing something else. I mean, yes, we're attacking the bishop. But really, we're paying attention to this square right here. Okay, so most people are going to save the bishop. They're going to go back here. And look at this rook. Look at this rook. We can attack it. And when it moves here, we can attack it again. And guess what? It has to go back. And we can attack it again. And guess what? You can probably see where this is going. We can get a perpetual, it's not a perpetual check. It's a, it's a threefold repetition. We can get the same position three times. The game is a draw. And we can force it. We can force it because the only way white can avoid this is by letting us take a rook for free, which obviously they don't want to do or they're going to, be losing the game, right? So if, like I said, if you're playing against a higher rated opponent, you know, and you're okay with a draw, keep this line in, in the back of your mind, okay? So uh, that's basically it, guys. It's a kind of a crash course on the, the Albany counter gambit. A lot of fun, a lot of tricks and traps there, like I showed you. And even if they don't fall for it, you're still in a, you know, a relatively equal position. I'll actually give you guys an example. I played this just earlier today. And my opponent captured. And when I played d4, I think they played a3 immediately. And I said, okay, well, I'm just going to develop. And we got something like this. And I think they played e3. I played bishop g4, bishop b2. I captured. They traded. And we got this position. This exact one that I showed you. Uh, this is a, it's like a 2400 rated player. I took here. And I think they didn't actually go for this. I think they went bishop e2. And we just had an equal position. I ended up losing the game, but it wasn't anything from the opening. It was just got outplayed, you know, later on in the game. But this is a totally equal position. I think I made the mistake of moving my knight here, and I should have brought my knight here a little bit more aggressive. And it either gets rid of that bishop and frees up this for my, my bishop, or I can trade it off. And that would have been a little better. But the point is, it's an equal position. You're playing chess. Even though they didn't fall for the trap, I didn't get into trouble. All right? So that's it. Uh, Albin Counter Gambit, let me know what you guys think, and I hope you enjoyed that and learned a thing or two. As always, thanks for watching. Stay sharp, play smart, and take care.